Dr. Del Diamond was educated at Swarthmore, Harvard, and Yale, and is recognized as one of the 15 most influential neuroscientists alive today. Fortunately for the children of the world, she was instrumental in founding the research field of developmental cognitive neuroscience. A mouthful, I know. Here's an easier version. Her specialty is the development of executive functions in children. She describes executive functions as, quote, the toolkit, the cognitive toolkit for success. Or as another recognized researcher, Dr. Philip David Zalazzo describes them, quote, the deliberate goal-directed control of behavior. Terms you may have heard of, um, grit, growth mindset, the marshmallow test, these are all executive functions. And research shows that executive functions are better than IQ as a predictor of success in school at every level from elementary school through college. In fact, perseverance and discipline or grit, as Dr. Angela Duckworth calls it, accounts for over twice as much variation in grades as IQ does. You can appreciate we'll have a standalone course and domain of our videos on our mind map that covers executive functions. Here's Dr. Diamond. Study after study shows that if you want children to succeed, they need good executive functions. They need to inhibit um, saying something they'd regret or um, impulsively jumping to the first thing that comes to mind. They need to be able to um, work with things in their mind to come up with solutions. Um, and they need to have the flexibility to be able to see different perspectives, see things in different ways. For example, um, I may disagree with you about politics, but I may agree with you about what makes a good human being. Or I may see the economic consequences of this, but from another perspective, I can see the human consequences. We need to be able to see things from different perspectives, to be able to switch and not just stay stuck in seeing something always in the same way for, through the same lens. In fact, what corporations and companies want most in employees is in part creativity, being able to think outside the box, being able to solve unexpected problems, being able to come up with solutions when nobody else could, being able to frame a problem in a new way or come up with a different approach to solving the problem. That's a 21st century skill that all companies are looking for. Cognitive flexibility rests importantly on the two more primary executive functions, working memory and inhibitory control. Because cognitive flexibility requires playing with ideas in your head, playing with information in your head. How can I think of an unusual use for this thing? How can I think of a, a new solution to this problem? You're doing that mentally. You're using working memory. And you have to inhibit old ways of thinking. You have to inhibit the first response, which you're, it's easy to jump to, but may preclude more creative responses. You have to inhibit old ways of thinking about things. So cognitive flexibility requires both working memory and inhibitory control. Stress is the enemy of, co of executive functions and cognitive flexibility in particular. The more we stress children, the less able their prefrontal cortex is able to work properly, the less able they're going to be, the less able they're going to be to be creative or problem solve well or reason well or um, inhibit uh, reflexive reacting and impulsivity. Um, uh, and we can stress children in any number of ways. We can stress children by overscheduling them. We can stress children by being overcritical of them. We can stress children by worrying too much. One enemy of cognitive flexibility and creativity is having people or children afraid to make a mistake. If you're afraid to make a mistake, then you're gonna stay with what you know. And if you just stay with what you know, then you're not coming up with anything creatively different and you're, you're not um, going beyond to learn anything new. So we need children to know it's okay to make a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes, even us. And the only way to improve is to risk making a mistake, to go beyond what you already know. Because by definition, if you stay with what you already know, you're not learning, you're not growing, you're not progressing. So we have to let children know not to be afraid to make a mistake, to encourage them to make mistakes. 
because that's the way you grow and learn. One enemy of uh, helping children in creative problem solving is overprotective parenting. Less is more. The quicker we rush in to solve problems for children, the less we give children an opportunity to solve problems for themselves, to get the self-confidence that they can solve problems themselves. We need to have the patience to let the child solve the problem on his or her own and then have the pride and self-confidence that yes, they were able to do it on their own. That encourages them to continue to be able to do it in the future. Another thing that helps cognitive flexibility is practice. And there are all kinds of ways you can practice it. Like at home, um, how can we think of a way to make you happy and make me happy? You want to stay up and watch TV for another half an hour, and I want you to go to bed now. How can we creatively think of a solution that is okay with you and okay with me? Just asking children questions to have them think about things in different ways. For example, ask them, how is a carrot like a cucumber? And maybe they'll focus on shape and say they're both long, or they'll focus on what kind of food they are and say they're both vegetables. Now ask, how is a carrot like an orange? They might say they're both food, but likely they'll say they're both orange in color. So now instead of focusing on shape or what type of food, they're focusing on color. Now how is a carrot like a potato? Maybe they'll focus on that they both grow underground. Different ways to think about carrot, just to change your perspective. Are we gonna focus on color? Are we gonna focus on shape? Are we gonna focus on kind of food? Or to have fun with thinking about what kind of unusual uses could you think of for common everyday things, like a spoon or a table? What kinds of things could you do with a table besides ride on it or eat food from it? Well, for example, you could put it up against the door to make sure nobody can open the door. Or you could get under it to protect yourself from the rain or from things somebody is throwing at you. Or you could turn it upside down to play horseshoes. Or you could use it as a percussion instrument. Encourage children to think outside the box. What unusual uses can we do with things you're very familiar with? Um, maybe you put something just slightly out of reach and encourage the child to think about how the child might use tools or or other things to help the child get that, that right now is just out of reach. To think outside the box. That's what companies want. Think creatively, problem solve. Be, um, think about ways that maybe nobody else has thought of before. The most heavily researched contributor to cognitive flexibility, to creativity in social psychology is mood. Many studies have been done on this. And social psychologists have found that a happy mood is what helps creativity, specifically in the sense of cognitive flexibility, most. When we're happier, we're able to think more flexibly. We're able to see connections between unusual examples of a category or things that you, you need to creatively see the connections between. When we're feeling afraid, then we want to stay with what we know. We start to get tight, we start to pull in, and we're much less flexible. We're much, more, we're much less willing to think outside the box. When we're happier, we're more open to possibilities. We're more open to the unusual. So feeling happy and feeling not afraid is very important for cognitive flexibility. Play is one of the great arenas for practicing all of the executive functions. For example, if you're playing with your friends and it isn't a scripted play, but it's just free play, let's say you're pretending to be explorers who are crossing the ocean to find new lands. Well, first of all, you probably don't have a boat in the classroom. So you're going to have to creatively come up with props for this voyage across the sea to explore new lands. And your friends may take that scenario in ways you never expected because you're all extemporaneously just coming up with a plot. So you're going to have to flexibly, in real time, adjust to where that play scenario is going. You're going to have to use cognitive flexibility. 
cognitive flexibility to find the implements you need for, for whatever you're acting out, and cognitive flexibility to adjust to what your friends are coming up with. Let's say you're playing a game with your friends and you have a disagreement on what happened or who's right. You have to have the cognitive flexibility to work that through, to listen to your friend, have your friend listen to you, and together come to a resolution. To be able to work together with others well takes flexibility because we all have to adjust to one another.